Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on the final stage of our sweater. Get way too excited. This is part seven, seven out of seven. Once you complete this tutorial you will have finished your sweater. Very exciting, yes? Very, very exciting. All right, what you will need for your sweater today is you will need lots of thread. You're going to be sewing your shoulder seams. You're going to be sewing your sleeves together. You're going to be doing your final round of ribbing. Very, very exciting. All right, what you will need for this tutorial, however, now I would really recommend this, guys, because this will tighten up your work up the top because it does come up a little loose. I made it that way on purpose. Now, you will need a smaller size hook than you were using for your um, main body of work, okay? So whatever hook size you have, drop a hook size down, yeah? Then you will also need your scissors. Up there, and you will need two stitch markers. I've only got one here, but you'll probably need two. And you'll need your sewing needle, and you'll also need a darning needle. Now, I say that because I struggled. If I'm if you're using wool like me, the sewing needle itself will I'll do it at the back so I don't pull any threads will tend to pull a thread here with a sewing needle, but a darning needle that's got a flatter edge will keep your uh, threads from. You know, not splitting and so on. Whoosh, don't tell them there's one end still not weaved in. Shh, don't tell them. Um, <laughs> so that's it, guys. I'm not going to talk too much. Once again, the tutorial goes for a long time. I'm going to let you head off on your own and finishing part seven of your patchwork sweater. Good luck all. Alrighty, guys, what you need for this part is your fronts and your backs. Now, I actually have a different picture on the back. Uh, we talked about this on one of our lives, but we'll probably talk about it again on Wednesday's live and Saturday's live of this week. Now, if you weren't familiar with our lives, we have our lives at 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoons and 10 a.m. Saturday mornings. That's Melbourne, Australia time. Marry that up with your country. Um, and we discuss things like this, you know, if there's any changes. You guys won't have that. You guys will have this piece right here but that's the front or the back yeah in my case that's the front but we won't worry about that grab that's the right side of your work too how you can see is really nice on one side and you know a bit kind of a little bit messy on the other where you see little little loops that's the wrong side you want to have the right side of your work facing you for one piece then grab the second side of your sweater I've got lots of tails. We'll talk about that in a minute too. That's the right side of your sweater. Now, when you grab the second side, you are placing the right side on top of the right side. So you should now be looking at the wrong side of your work on this side. And when you lift it up, it's the wrong side of your work on that side. So your two right sides are facing each other. All right. And to make sure you have this correct, you would have different colours opposite each other if you did the same color combination as me you would have different colors if you have the same colors facing each other then you've got a wrong side and a right side on the wrong side sort of thing if that makes any sense all right so this part of the tutorial we are going to be sewing our uh, top seams there someone asked me the other day why have you weaved in all your ends and not done these now this I don't recommend this if you're new to crochet I will use these threads to attach my pieces together. So the pink will attach that and the blue or the green will attach that. Now this, only do this if you are a professional. I'll show you the other way, which is the normal way, right? Because if you make a mistake and want to take this undone, you will have to cut into your work. And once you cut into your work, it's fine. But when you cut into your work around here, that's where your knot is. If you cut into the work around here, your thread is going to come undone and you'll have to take this whole row undone and reattach. All right. So just heads up, if you are wanting to do the same as me and use the same yarn, then um, as, as the work that's on your, your piece itself, then make sure you are a professional before doing that, yeah? But for the, the, the newbies, this is what you're going to do. You're going to grab the same colour if you like or any colours you want. Let's just try the red so you can see what I'm doing. 
I'm going to cut a piece long enough that I think will, let's just double it, yeah, that I think will go across there. Give it a cut. Grab your needle. Now I've got the two needles here and I'll show you real close up so you know what I'm, I'm doing. One is a pointy needle to help weave in those ends at the end, yeah. This one here, you don't necessarily have to have one with a little flick on it. Um, it's a weaving or a darning needle. But what you could and should have is one that's a flat point. So you, you don't pin yourself at that matter. And the reason is because you're going to be going inside stitches. Now, if you use a pointy needle, sometimes it pulls the thread and you don't want that. So my suggestion would be to invest in one of these thicker needles with a thicker edge. If you don't have one, then use a normal sewing needle. That's fine. Right. Now, grab your little thread and uh, thread your needle upside down guy let's turn him around and there we go all right so you're grabbing your thread like that let's pretend i don't have these tails here which might be a little bit confusing and annoying for you guys but what we're going to do is we're going to start from the out edge for now and when we pull our thread through i'm sorry let's try that again i don't think you saw what i did there my mistake, we'll get nice and close. Right through the actual stitch itself, pop your needle through. Yeah. And when you pop it through, you should end up with a little tail like that. Leave it there. From here, you're going to go to the opposite side, but from the inside of your work. So inside through the stitch like that. Yeah. And pull it through. Making sure to leave yourself a long tail for weaving in later. And then you're going to go through the back stitch there, into the stitch, and into the opposite stitch on the other side. And that's it, guys. That's all you're doing. From one stitch to the other to the other. Nothing fancy, just doing your stitch all the way through like so. Now I'm going to take mine undone. Okay, because I want to use the pink and not the red. All right, so we're here. Your pink is already attached if you are doing the same as me. All you're going to do is pop your pink back in the stitch and into the opposite side. For everybody else, just wait there. Or you can go right across and finish off. But if you're doing with the pink, that's it. That's all you're doing. Then you're going to your next stitch and your next stitch. All right. Am I not close enough? Let's try that again. For everybody wanting to see where I'm popping my needle, it's going in the whole stitch, two loops on top on one side, right opposite. Make sure you don't go into the same stitch, but right opposite. Now, if this is a problem for you and you can't see the stitches very well or you accidentally miss a stitch, I'll show you a quick tip that you can use so that just in case you've make, made a mistake further down. So you've got one, two, three, pop a stitch marker in your third stitch. And you go one, two, three, pop a stitch marker in your third stitch there. Or fourth stitch, whatever. And you start sewing all the way down. And when you get to that stitch marker, if you end up like this, then you know you've made a mistake. But when you get to that stitch marker and everything evens up, then it's okay. So what you do is you do exactly the same all the way through. And this is if you're struggling to see, yeah, you do that. Now there is another way of doing this as well but for this part because you've got stitches here you can use your stitch marker. When you're doing the side seams later, let's say for argument's sake you're doing the side seams, you can use these guys if you've got them. Me personally I just use stitch markers to be honest with you. You pop one there and you pop one a little bit further down and so when you're sewing across this way all the way down to here, you get here, you take that off and then you continue. That's if you have these little clip things. I personally just use stitch markers to help me out. And actually I don't use that anymore because I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> all right, so this is very simple. Um, I'm going to actually do the rest off air until I get to the very next colour, which is there. All right, the, the koala. 
All right, guys, now I'm on the last two stitches. Now, you'll probably see some extra tails here on some of my work because I had some bad yarn. <laughs> I had quite a few knots in certain, um, certain colours, okay? So I ended up with a few knots right on the very last rows. Can you believe it? All right, so I'm on my second last stitch of this colour. Now, if you've done your count correct all the way across, your colours should add up. If they haven't added up, make them add up. It means you've done something wrong with the stitch, yeah? You know, fudge it if you need to, yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm on my last stitch on one side. You might be on that side. doesn't matter which side you're on. We're just going to go through the last stitch like that. Don't worry about this little thread here because that's a damaged one. And then we're going to change colours. Now you can change to the blue if you like or you can... Just start the green and work your way in. I'm going to change to blue. Now, if you um, haven't changed colours, you can just continue going all the way to the end and we can weave this end in at the end and we'll show you how to do that later. Now, this end here, you can weave that... Oh, not this one. This one with this attached. You can weave that in if you like, but I would like to go through one more time, but I'm going to go uh, back into the stitch, into the second last stitch, just to bring the tail through, right? You don't need to do this. You could probably go up the top if you like and leave it there. I've got so many extra ends there hanging around. And I'm just going to pull it through. And I'm not going to weave that in end in yet, but you can weave it in now if you like, back and forwards. I'm going to do that later because I just want to show you what to do with this side. And then we can weave that in later. So grab your new... Look at the fluff. <laughs> It's all fluffy. Grab your new colour, whichever that may be. And if you have spare threads on your new colours, use them, yeah? And that way your uh, sweater will look the same no matter how you look at it, yeah? Now I've got my tails come through here, but I'm going to go back into the stitch. I put it in to weave in, but I'm not going to weave it in at all. So you're going to go into your first stitch, into the first stitch on the opposite side, I think I split the yarn. That's another thing, guys. Be careful not to split your stitch because once you turn your sweater inside the right side out, you are going to see the splits, yeah? So just be careful. And that's it. That's all you're doing. And once again, you're going through the first loop and the second loop. So what, what you do when you come through, this will be open a little bit, yeah? later it can be a little bit open so i would suggest finding a way to make it close literally splitting a couple of stitches there and there on the side through the green and through the blue and just pulling it shut and that actually closes it more yeah now you're going back into the stitch that you were in now don't pull it through completely this is what i want you to do i'll bring that out a bit more is go halfway through hold it there Grab your needle and get a little bit more closer and just pop it through that loop that you're ready to close up and give it a tug. And then you are going to weave your blue end in, which is what you're going to do later with that red tail from the beginning that I showed you. Yeah, You're going to weave your blue end in anywhere you like, but stick to the blue, the blue piece. And as you can see, now I'm splitting, but just the top. And maybe even if you're really worried, you can leave this and weave it in later. In fact, I might leave it and weave it into the ribbing later, just under the ribbing stitch later. Yeah, I might leave that to do that. Now, what you need to do over here is weave that red tail in because that's going to be your sleeve or whatever colour you used here. That's going to be your sleeved area and you're going to need to weave that end in. Before we continue, I'm going to show you the front so you can have a look at it and see what it looks like. It doesn't look like you were sewing it together. All right, you can see, sorry about the puppy, this is the time for feeding, so I'm going to have to stop recording in a minute. Um, you can see some of the pink here, but it looks like it's done on purpose, yeah? If you were to have the red across here, you would see the red. Now, if you're not worried about that, that's fine. I actually don't like the look of seeing a different colour there, so I thought I'd use the same colour. Now, if you've got plenty of the colours in stock, you can use those. In the meantime, your job is to is to go to the other side and do exactly 
the same thing. So across here and get down to here. Alrighty guys, I thought I'd stand up and do this part here. But what you should have is both your sides attached like that. Yeah, they should both be attached like that. And now what we're going to do, and the reason I'm standing up is, let me pause the camera for a second, is attaching our sleeve to our fronts and backs, which is, it does look complicated, but it really is quite simple. All right, let me pause it again. This is one side. It's actually, I turned it to the front side before I had the back. So we're doing the front. This is the front of your work. And this is one sleeve. Now, as you can see, the green and the pink, yeah, are matching, but they're matching the opposite side. What's matching this side, and it's not really very straight, is it? <laughs> is the gray and the red. All right, so I'm hoping that made sense before um, in the sleeve video about being careful not to have your colours clash. If you were to face it that way, your red and your brown would be there and you flip your arm and your green and your pink would be there as well. All right, so total opposites to um, the front of your work, yeah? All right, so this part here me needs you to actually open up, mm -hmm. the mess I'm making here, open up your piece yeah let me do it again and what we want to do is have the right side facing us and i'll do that off here give me a second this is the section that we just sewed together now all right so what you want to do move it over a little bit <laughs> that is the center of your shoulder yeah so grab your sleeve open it up to the wrong side i'm sorry let's try that again open it up to the right side of your sleeve what you need to do is fold it in half and find the center sorry about all these tails guys <laughs> they really are a lot aren't they I should have just cut them a bit shorter all right so my luckily enough for me my center lands right in between one of my color two of my colors right so you've got two on one side two on the other and that's okay some of you may have the extra square so your center will land in the middle of your work so just find the center make it as neat as possible right and bring the right side facing you two right sides facing you flip your sleeve over alrighty guys here is the top that's the middle of my neck edge yeah. And here is <laughs> my upside down sleeve. Let's try that there. And that's the middle of my sleeve. Now you need to have the right sides facing. Yep. And you need to have literally right flat bang in the middle seam line face facing if you if you have yours like that. Some of you may have ended up with the half being in the middle there. So just Find your middle, pop a little stitch marker there, oops, that way, and go flat bang right in the middle on that side, all right? But for most of us, we kind of end up here. It doesn't matter either way, you know, you know where your middle is. We may not have the same middles. And just pop your stitch marker in, leaving it there, or your little clamps, whichever you have, and then you do the same. You literally pop your little clasps or your clamps all the way along here, like so. Keep popping them. Let's pretend like I'm popping them. My one's there, one's there, one's there. Right? And right over here at the very beginning, you do exactly the same. Now making sure it is even all the way across. Okay, you want to make sure your sleeve is exactly perfect all right once you know that yours is perfect you've got all your clamps or your stitch markers whatever face it the other way now the reason is when we sew through here and I'll just show you a close-up when we go through these stitches it's so easy to find the stitches right but on the back it's harder to find them 
and you might find yourself going in part of the hole, part of the stitch, part of the hole, and you don't want to have some weird looking uh, bits about it, all right? So turning your work around, just bear with me on this camera, guys. I've, my other camera went to camera heaven. <laughs> Do you like that? Camera heaven. And I'm kind of trapped and stuck in between cameras here, all right? So just bear with me. Let's go there. Okay, so my uh, zoom in is not very good with this camera. Nothing's very good with this camera, so bear with me. And I tell a lie, the visual is actually very good with this camera, yeah? All right, pop your clasps and your clamps in. Don't do a Mary, because a Mary is just going to do this, right? <laughs> I think I better pop one stitch marker in. That's it, perfect. All right, so grab your sewing needle. Let's move in so we can fix this problem. And your thread, whichever thread you may be using, it's entirely up to you. Once again, I'm going to use a thread that is attached to my work. But if you want to, just grab any other thread and use that, yeah? So whatever's attached to your work, just, oh, I'll take that out now. Pop it in the grey at the back, grey stitch at the back, and pop it through a stitch in front. And I'm just going to pop it in there. All right, so anywhere you want, as long as you remain consistent. So I'm going to go to that one and right to your very next stitch there. Oh, no, I'm not. We've got to close this up a little bit more. We don't have to worry about that because that will close up later when we do the side seams on the sleeve. So don't even worry too much about that. Just continue on. You could, we could still close it up if you like, but just continue on all the way down the top of your sleeve. And you are going on this side, you are going in any stitch you can find. If you want to go into your spaces, just be weary that your spaces drop down a little. See, there's a space and it drops down a little. So you actually will be one there and one up here, one there, one up here. So I'm trying to stay consistent by just staying in stitches of some sort. Yeah, stitches there and stitches there. And again, you know, you can do it any way you like. I'm going to do it this way because I would like for my colours to be the same in the row, all right? So what we're going to do, we're gonna sew right across here, get to the center of your work and wait there for me and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, so yours truly has been messing around with ends all over the place. It probably didn't pay to keep all these ends lying around. <laughs> I thought I was trying to be smart. But anyway, there's way too many ends. All right. So I asked you to get to the center of your work and you still have <laughs> that much left to do. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the rest. We are right in the center. Take out your stitch marker. All right. So you're, you're at the end of this. If you want to change your color, you can. I'm just going to go straight into the center of the stitch there and go straight into the center or maybe you know you can split the center stitch if you like you don't need to I'm going to split it just for fun then I'm going to go into the center stitch itself I mean the next stitch I'm not even in frame here we go I've gone through the center of the stitch in the center there then I'm going to go right into the actual stitch and then right into the new stitch on your opposite side which actually has a bit of grey thread in there for me but you don't worry about it you just keep going yeah just move that little thread out of the way I'm stalling here because it's really heavy now guys because it's it's you know really big <laughs> and just find some stitching in the other side and get the space or the stitch the actual stitch from the opposite colour and put it through. So I find getting it through the stitch on that side is a lot easier because, you know, you can see the space. But then you need to pop it in the stitch from this. I'm going to take this thread out. Let me take this thread out. It doesn't even belong in there. I don't know what it's doing in there. And go into the stitch from this side. Find some stitching somewhere. Go into that stitch. And then the rest is easy. 
Well, no, not really. It's very fiddly with these stitches on this side. <laughs> the other side is very easy, like I said, and it would have been. Um, but there you go, guys. I'm going to let you head off on your own. We've got planes coming overhead now. I'm going to let you head off on your own. Finish here. How low is that plane? Finish <laughs> this side right here. Get to the very end and wait for me there. Alrighty guys, I am right down here to the very end of my piece. Alright, so I have I think one stitch left, yeah. So it's a bit of a tricky stitch because it's like, you know, stuck in there. Don't stress too much because that's going to be under the arm and a lot of it will not be noticed, that last bit, yeah. So we're just going to find some stitching, oh that didn't work, some stitching opposite, like so. We are going to go back in there, but a little bit closer to the edge and just kind of, you probably don't need it because that's going to be closed when we go down the side seams in a minute. But just pop it back in. Oh, I'm on the wrong side to weave in the end. Oh, let's pop it, pop it back. <laughs> I don't know where you are, but there you go. And then what you do here, so you can do the same with the rest of your tails, is literally find some spaces to weave in this end on the edge. Now, if you want to do it down here later, you can when the sleeve is on, uh, right under the armpit, which I would actually suggest. But you've got a lot of ends to weave in anyways, so it doesn't really matter where you weave it in. Yeah, I'm going to leave that there. That's right under the armpit. That is not coming undone. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, what you now have is that. Yeah, I've weaved in all my ends. You're going to have to do that yourself. Yeah. But in the meantime, this is what you're going to do now. You're going to be sewing along the sleeve all the way down and all the way down to the base of your sweater. It's one long end if you want to use the one thread. But if you're anything like me and want to make life difficult, <laughs> Use each thread that you see dangling to weave in uh, your piece. Now, that is only if you're a little bit more professional. And you can see in some areas it's a bit thicker because I had two pinks here and I didn't have any colours on that side. I had two blues here and didn't have any colours on that side. So literally, um, I had a lot of ends. So it's probably better for you not to do it the way I'm doing it and just start from the base or from the sleeve, work your way up and then go this way. No matter what you do, when you get to this section here, just go over it a couple of times, go back and then go back because this needs to be a little bit more firmer. It's under the arms and you stretch your arms a little bit. And if you're anything like me and you like to do aerobics, which I don't, um, <laughs> see how I talk? Um, that's going to uh, rip and tear and you don't want that. So you want to reinforce your center. You don't have to. It's something that I do, all right? So we're going to start by doing the sleeve. Now I've weaved in most of my ends and left the tails. I'm gonna start from the base and left the tails that need, that I'm going to need to sew in from there to there. And I noticed that this tail is way too small. So it's only going to go maybe halfway. And then I'm going to use the other blue to come this way. This is not for everybody. Okay, this is why I'm not showing you this part. This is for me, yeah. So doing it this way kind of doesn't work. Either way, I still have to weave the ends in anyways. And this one here has a really long red, which I'm going to use off air later to sew down here, rather than going up this way with a whole new thread. But with you, I'm going to use a whole new thread so that you can see that. And then I'll show you what to do here if you decide not to use the whole new thread. All right, so in the meantime, we are going to pretend that we're starting from the base. So you need to thread your sewing needle. You can, oh, not like that, look at that. Well, let's pretend that we're starting from this end. Now, this is tricky, okay, because you have, this is your ribbing and can be a little awkward. The, the idea is to go into the very first stitch like that and find that very first stitch on the other side. Maybe we should have left our stitch markers in, but anyway. And just pop your needle through like that. Oops, not too far. And leave yourself a good tail to weave in at the end, yeah? Leave yourself a really good tail. And so we go back again. What side are we on? We're on that side. 
we find the stitch on that side and the stitch on the other side and we start sewing that as well. Now before we continue, this is where you need to either place stitch markers or little clamps like this, right? Marry up the center of your work. If you struggle with this one because it's the both red, marry it up from here, all right? Grab your color, and this is how I find it easy. Pop two of your colors together like that. Not worried about those tails. Pop this on, or a stitch marker, whatever. If you've got stitch markers and don't have the little claspy, clampy things, you can just pop stitch markers along the way and backward and forward and backward and forward until you get to your next color. And then you grab your next set of stitch markers or your next clasps, clamps, whatever, and you pop them on the next set. This way you're always straight. Oh, you're going to pop them on the set, not over the set. This way you're always straight. Now, every now and then, now I'm going to put this crooked on purpose so you think it's straight. We all think it's straight, won't we? Pretending we think it's straight. Then I want to open it up, and this is what I want you to do every now and then, open it up and make sure it is straight because when you open it up you will see that it's not exactly straight because I accidentally moved it on purpose so you can see it crooked but just open it up occasionally and make sure that it's straight now I did that with the sleeve on the other sleeve um, let me bring this down a little bit to there that's better um, and I actually had to take half a, a section undone and lucky I haven't weaved in the end then. So I had to take half the section undone and do it again, all right? So just be weary, this is not a good look, all right? Just make sure you check your work. Now, I don't think I need to show you the rest. You've seen, um, you've done the sleeve, oh, not the sleeve, I'm sorry. You've done the top of the sleeve where the shoulder is. And now all you need to do is do just that, using your clasps, clamps, or stitch markers. But I do want you to get to the center here. And we're all going to get to that center right there and we're all going to meet up because we're going to do the center bit together now the center bit is the underarm of your sleeve that's the top of your sleeve that's the underarm so everyone do just the front get to the underarm right there and i'll meet you there once you're done all righty guys here we are at the end of this section and I've got the corner right here now this corner you've just got to be very careful to make sure that everything matches you want it doesn't really matter too much in the corner but you want it all to be even like this is your underarms oh, let's bring that in frame I'm sorry guys it's the new camera here and I'm we're trying to work around it so you want your whole of the underarm to match so make sure it all matches before you continue yeah there all right so where I am is around here mm, my thread my thread is really short don't worry about mine yours obviously would be long we hope if it's short like mine just keep going so you're going in you're stitching like normal checking you're going through the right stitches when you get to the corner you're going to go across here Go back once and then go right back and then keep going. If you've got more thread to do. Mine, I'm just going to weave it back here later. You won't see that. I'll do that off air. But while I'm here, I'm going to get right into the corner section right there. And into the corner. And I'm splitting some yarn in this particular moment. You don't need to. That's just me for this particular moment. Go into one and then go right into the opposite side. And again, I might be splitting some yarn, but that's okay. Because from here, we're going to go back. Just because I want to make sure this underarm area is tight. All right, so going back in that direction again. And then you guys can continue to go all the way, all the way down to here. Now, I don't have enough thread for this red so I'll probably end up adding some up here the red uh, have I I've got some I think I've got some red oh no here we go I've got a long one okay so when you get to and just 
grab your stitch marker stitch marker uh, when you get to before you start the ribbing just there all right so do your underarm get to there and then meet me up here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next All right, guys, I asked you to get to the base of the sleeve there. Now, I got a little bit crochet happy. I'm sorry, let's try so happy and nearly forgot. <laughs> so I just kept sewing and got to the edge. But taking out your stitch marker, it's a little tricky because we have a red on this side, yeah? So just making sure that they all, or the whole thing does even up as best you can. And if you're not sure about it, I'm just keep going right here. Just make sure that the base of both sides are straight. You can probably, and I think it would benefit you because I nearly almost messed up on the other side to pop stitch markers along every second or third stitch so that you don't um, go off track here. I did a little bit on the other sleeve. I had to take mine undone and do it again. So just, it would benefit you to do that. Once you get to this bit here go ahead and do that now if you wanted to i didn't on the other side but still you could go back one just to make that a little bit tighter you could i didn't on the other sleeve i don't know what i'm doing with this one but anyway um and just keep going all the way down your piece and we are almost finished get excited all right so i'm very excited you know very very excited but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the rest off air. Now, the reason is I'm going to end up with too many tails and I'll sort that out for myself later. But when you come back, we're going to work. You know what? Let's do it now. Let's pretend like you've done this section. See when you get to the end and you've got like this on your sleeve where you've done your little start and it's kind of knotted or whatever the case may be. But your sleeve is still kind of a little bit open here. When you wear it, that's going to be noticeable. So my suggestion would be to grab your needle. All right. And at the end of your row, just marry up some light threads there. Still open a little bit. You can go and do exactly the same there. I would do that. And then go back into your piece this way. You can only do it once if you like, because we've done it a few times. And then I would start weaving. I'm going to do one more. And then I would start weaving in this end, because um, if you don't do that, this is going to look open. And you don't want that to look open, yeah? And the bonus with this is, if you find it a little too loose, you can use it to tighten up your sleeve. I think mine's perfect. I tried it on before and it's just literally perfect. Just find some place to weave that last end in, like so. One way, one way, guess what? I'm a bit of a stickler, let's go back the other way. And I'm weaving it in the top stitches that I've sewn in, that I've sewn up together, yeah? And once you've done it your third time, or your second time, if you're not as fussy as me, give it a cut, be careful not to cut your work. And that's the end of this sleeve. Alrighty guys, so what you should have now is one completed side. You need to complete the other side. And once you complete this side, meet me back here, get way too excited, because we're going to start on our neck edge. In the meantime, head off on your own, complete the other sleeve, and I'll meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys, we are just about to start our neck edge, but before we do, we had our work inside out before, yeah? Because we wanted to do our sleeves where you can see the stitching right there, can you see it all? Now we want to put our work back in the right side. So, grab your little sleeves, like so, and turning it into the right side of your work. Which side do you want to be the back? Which side do you want to be the front? It doesn't really matter, they're both the same. But for me, I have this patch here. I want this side to be the back. Again, it doesn't matter. 
yeah there's no right or wrong way so what you want to do is find as rough a center as you can in the back it doesn't have to be perfect this part yeah well actually you could count your stitches and just find the middle I'm just going to do that it doesn't matter yeah and just pop my hook in now the hook I'm using is let's get a close-up 4.5 millimeter hook now you can also use your five millimeter hook or your neck size up if you like the same size you used for your sweater but I'm using the smaller size because this neck edge is relatively loose now so we need to tighten it up all right so grab your red okay so grab the red that you have or you could use any color you want for this part for the ribbing you don't have to use the red if you don't want to but I'm going to use the red so grab your red remember that you are working on the right side of your work now yeah so pull your loop through like that just grab your tail passing it forward this is just going to lock it into place yeah you're chaining one and you're doing a single crochet in that same stitch pull a loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two grab your stitch marker pop it in that stitch and that's the stitch you'll be slip stitching to at the end of the row now you can do this if you like you can crochet over your tail and then weave it in I'm going to do that you still no matter even if you crochet over it still weave that in yeah single crochet all the way across I'm going to do I don't know three or four and then I'll drop my tail uh, one two three four that'll do and the tail we can weave that in as well that is not gone oh, hello which one did I do here get rid of that <laughs> it's not gone you're going to weave that in as well later yeah but in the meantime single 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 until you get to the last stitch don't complete that last stitch do the second last stitch finish it and wait there now what you have are your two stitches I might leave the tail we might work over that your one stitch here and your one stitch of the next color you are going to be popping those two stitches together in every color um, separation that you come to so pop your hook in pull a loop through two loops on your hook ignore the tail yeah pop your hook into that first stitch pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops you can pop the tail at the back or you can crochet over it like I'm going to and just do your normal single crochet all the way over to your very next color and I'm going to drop that tail now we don't need it single crochet in the second last stitch and you've come to an area where you have your two colors together you're going to start your single crochet hold it there jump into that thick it's the whole thick area right there now this is where your stitching is going to change so you've got your three loops on your hook because you're doing one and two together yet yeah? yarn over pull through all three loops on the hook now I'm not going to crochet over this tail for this part because I need you to have a look at what we're doing here this edge here is the edging of your top area yeah so what we want to do is find spaces to go into a bit like when you were doing um, the sewing on the sides there's a space right there and you do one single crochet in that space you see a space next to it do one single crochet in that space a space there one there wherever you kind of see a space like that being careful not to jump into let me show you so you don't do it being careful not to jump into that one because that's so low down and looks like you're dropping you're going down a stitch you don't want that you want to stay up nice and high it is easily tempted to do it but don't because that is a stitch below yeah single crochet in your next and your next and just find some spaces don't put too many in being careful don't put like two around here and one up there and that kind of thing just try and stay as even as possible and you know, make sure your thread doesn't get tangled <laughs> now I've got some threads here please don't worry about them 
that was uh, yarn that wasn't working well for me and I had to cut them <laughs> as you do single in the next stitch single in your next space it's all the spaces yeah single in your next space now my next space has a thread you don't have to worry about it I do I'll just pass it at the back there mmm <laughs> And that goes in there, like so. All right, so when we get here, how many have I got here? Two or one? One. When we get here, we pop our hook, I've got a lot of threads here, into that blue section, like so. Start your single crochet, don't complete it. You're jumping straight into the green, which might be a little tough. You might end up having to split some yarn. Let's get rid of the tail so that doesn't bother you but you might need to split, or we could just jump straight into that space right there for the green, all right? So make sure you tighten everything up and do your single crochets. So single in your next space. There's another space in there, single. Single in your next. Single in your next. And your next. This one's a little, I don't know, I don't know if I could call it easier or if it's more confusing this side, but I just find it a little odd because there's stitches everywhere. I don't know whether I'll take that when I'm done that one. Single in your next, it looks like it's going to be too crowded there. Yeah, take that undone. Just being weary, I don't know, it's it's a fudgy area. It's an area that you can fudge, but try not to, that even looks too spacious now. <laughs> <laughs> we can't win, but as best you can try to even out as best you can. There's no right or wrong way of doing this part. Yeah Wherever you see a space that space. No, we're going to get out of that one we're Kind of going to go into the stitch without splitting the yarn. Excuse me, Mary. There's the stitch right there Yeah, try to avoid the big spaces like that and get into the stitch again There's no right or wrong way of doing this. I've just look at that See, I've just split it. Just be careful not to do that. I'm not going to sit here and show you the whole section. I just want to show you another um, colour change at the armhole. Not the armhole, at the uh, front of your piece so you don't mess it up, which is easy to do. I'm going to go in the space with that one, I think. Into the space with the next one. No. I have to go into the stitch. trying to keep it all in frame. I'm sorry guys, it's so big and sitting on my lap at the moment. Into the space there. That might be a little too high. Into the stitch. Yeah, that's too high. See that? So I'm going to avoid that space there. I find that space a little too high. Look where it goes. I'm just going to go into the stitch just beneath that space right there. I think that's the best way to do it. It's real tricky this area and that one there is a little high as well. Just go under it. When you get to the area of colour change, you're going to do your two together again. So we're here. Let's see, we need two here. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, I might just have to jump into that there. Yeah. So now what you've got is these two together. You're going to pop your hook in the green, pull a loop through, hold it there, into the pink, pull a loop through, hold it there, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now I tried to keep it as, let's see if I can show you, as straight as possible. Now the rest is a little bit, let's bring this down a bit so you can see what we're doing now. Just make sure you're turning your work around. Otherwise, it's too, um, it'll be too much to work with. So what you have right now is half a side done. From there to there, all the way up to here. If you get to here, that's the centre of your piece. Now, for every other size, it's all very similar. You're getting to, you, you may not have got to the section that I got to when I was doing mine, because my sizing is different along here. Okay, I should have mentioned that a little earlier. I did leave a little disclaimer up the top. But make sure that no matter what happens, when you get to two, the colour change, you are doing your two together at every 
color change. Whoops, two together at every color change. All right, that is all you need to remember. We're going to show you one more and then you can head off on your own and finish this row uh, on your own. Okay, uh, the second last stitch right there and let's bring this up again. That's uh, probably too high. Bear with me on the new camera, guys. I'm still getting used to the, the screen and everything. All right, so you're popping your hook in your pink, pull a loop through into the brown, pull a loop through, or orange, I should say, yarn over your hook and you're pulling through all three, and then you're going to keep going across. I don't think I need to show you anymore. I think you can actually head off on your own and do the rest of this piece yeah all right so head off on your own do the rest of this get to your very second last stitch around there just before your stitch marker and i'll meet you here once you're done don't forget two together two together and then you've got that awkward section two together up the top and then you've got your awkward section here and then you're back to normal stitching there all right head off on your own complete this section get to your second last stitch and i'll meet you there once you're done Alrighty guys, so here we are at the end of the round. I'm going to do a second last single crochet in there, like I said, to make sure your second last is not done yet. Well, it doesn't matter either way. Then we're going to slip stitch into this stitch marker, which means you're just popping your hook into the stitch with your stitch marker. You take out that stitch marker while you're here. Pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Notice how I tighten it up a little chain one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten that is how big our ribbing is going to be i'm sorry let me make that 11 <laughs> my apologies we're doing 10 stitches down all right so you need to pop your hook in the first stitch you come to and do a single crochet like so and you know single crochets we've done them on the ribbing which is exactly what you're doing now the ribbing yay pop your stitch marker in there if you know where to go to at the end of the row you don't have to but my suggestion let me take that out because mine's split would be to do it because you will be you will you can, not will, you can miss that stitch. Okay, so I'd rather not miss it. Okay, so now you're working along these stitches all the way down. So there's your first stitch and there's your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. Eight, nine, and your last one is tucked in there, but it's there. Ten. So you should have ten single crochets all together. Remember how we count them? These little V's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah? All right. So from here. We are going to, we're in this stitch right here. Yeah. We're going to slip stitch into the next one. So we're here in this stitch. Pop your hook into the next stitch. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. One. You're going to go into the very next one and do the same thing. Into your next stitch. It's a little tight for me. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook twice. So when you get to the inner section of your sweater, you are slip stitching across twice, all right? But in the very next stitch, not the same stitch that you are already in, all right? So now what you're going to do is kind of flip this little guy. We are now going to do our single crochets across here. We're going to do them in the back loops like we did with the normal ribbing. Now we've got to be weary of one thing. We have done two slip stitches across. So that is one and that is two. So skipping that slip stitch, that slip stitch, going into the back loop of that very last single crochet you did. 
and doing your normal single crochet. Now, if you're not sure if you're in the last one, just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you know you're there, all right? Just being weary and you are single crocheting in the back loop of every stitch, but not your last stitch in this row. Okay, there, and there. Whoops, I split my yarn. There, don't do that. And there, and there. By the way, you're still using your smaller hook. Yeah, you're still using that smaller hook there. Just single crochet all the way across making sure you've done 10 single crochets across from the beginning and they've got one more right there and then you've got your stitch marker stitch and you're doing your single crochet in the whole stitch right there not in the back loop the whole stitch take out your stitch marker and that is the first row repeat of your work yeah now we're going to do the second row which is a chain one flipping your work again now you may find that this is a bit confusing to keep flipping that way and your sweater will um, you know have to keep turning it around if you don't want to just do that if you don't want to keep turning it around it makes a difference here so just be wary of that but don't worry it's not a big difference it's okay all right so now into the very first stitch you see right there you're ignoring that chain you just did but in the stitch you're doing a single crochet stitch marker like so and into your back loops yet again all the way across don't lose your stitch like I just did that first one will count as first stitch and now we're doing our second stitch third four Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, still in the back loops, yeah, ninth, and tenth. Now this one can be a little tight, but go in there and make sure you do your tenth stitch like that. Now we're going to do our slip stitching across again. But know how we are actually in this stitch right here. So don't go back into that stitch. You're already in there. If you want to straighten up your guy, you'll see it. You're already in that stitch. You want to slip stitch into the very next one. So that's the one you're in. You want to slip stitch into the next. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop you are in one. Into the next stitch, pull a loop through and into the loop. And there you go. All right, so now once again, you are going to flip your work. Being careful not to work into your two slip stitches, one and two. If you're not sure, I just kind of go like this. There's the, uh, the edge of your work. Point it this way and I know that one there is our very first single crochet. And again, if you're not sure, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you know you're going to have 10 across. So go ahead and do your 10 across. It is a two row repeat, okay? The last two rows that we just did are the repeat. All right? So I'm hoping that makes sense. Nearly there. Another one of these tutorials that go a long time. But I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. Now we're at the end of the row. We're putting our single crochet into... Oops. Not split it. Don't split the yarn. I think I've put the stitch marker in crooked. Now that's another reason why you... Let's just say for argument's sake you didn't have your stitch marker in. And you thought you were at the end of the row. And you turned and did your work. You're one stitch short. So find that last stitch and do your single crochet in the full stitch. Chain one, turn your work again. All right, so that is the two row repeat. So I'm going to do the last two rows again, nice and quickly for you, and then you're off on your own, all right? So single crochet in that first stitch, stitch marker, 
single crochet in the back loops Get that out the way so it doesn't blur of each stitch across that's your third stitch go along you kind of work out where that tenth stitch is but look at what's how it's turning out how gorgeous is that all right once again you are already in this stitch see your knot is in there so you want to jump to the very next one and slip stitch in there then jump to the very next stitch and slip stitch in there flip your work skip one and two and single crochet all right single in your last stitch chain one and I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do the rest you are going to do the two row repeat all the way around but look at how gorgeous that is looking I love 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 the ribbing all right two row repeat in every section until you get all the way around once you get to this section here you know what let's pop a little stitch marker just before that first stitch there you know how we did the join two together yeah all right so I just wanted to show you this section here and 10 right there so that's my 10th stitch all right now we are already in that stitch let's get a close-up we're already there so this is our two together we're going to jump into the stitch like normal next to it pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook like normal jump straight into your very next stitch like normal it's as though you're not even worried about there was two together. It doesn't bother you, yeah? You flip your work. Again, making sure you're not jumping into your slip stitch. Yeah, these are your slip stitches. Yeah, where are they? One and two, that's your first stitch there. And you're doing your single crochet all the way up. I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do the whole thing. I'm just going to stop right here right now and you can continue on your way. But I just want to show you what it looks like right there. Uh, there you can see it doesn't really look like anything it's as though you've just keep going in the round and it doesn't you can't notice the two together there all right so head off on your own this is the best bit guys what I want you to do is do all of this oh where are we all of this ribbing right there all the way around and come right back here to your very second last row now everybody's will be different it will end up different no matter how it ends up just leave two or three little stitches left there and we will talk about what we're going to do at the end later all right so two or three stitches you know let's go right up to the third stitch for the sake of just in case anybody makes it to the third and not the second uh, you'll know what I mean right at the end. When you're finished your ribbing, get to that area right there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of my section. Now I actually have these these two rows here left, which is going to take me a little while to get them done. I'll pop it on fast for you in a minute. But I also have this one here. Now I've gotten to the end of this set here and let's see if I can get a nice close-up here for you to have a look at so I'm not really sure where everyone is but you may all end up on a different section but don't stress we'll work that out okay we'll work it out together so if you got to here and you've got one stitch there and you've got three spaces left do your two slip stitches over like normal one and two and you go up again back down again and um, I'll do this on fast for you so that you guys can actually uh, see all right what's going on so we'll turn our work 
and I will actually do this on fast for you. And they're giving you an opportunity to see what I'm doing. Oh, everything's in the way. This is so big now, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> All right. So once again, you're going to just do your normal single crochets in your back loops. I think I put it in a slip stitch there. Slip one, slip two. Oh, no, there it is. Back loop. And you are doing that single crocheting all the way across and off we go. I'm going to pop that on fast. And 10. Chain 1. Turn your work again. Mm, like so. And now, once again, you're going down the other way. I'm going to pop a stitch marker in this time. I take mine out. I don't really use a stitch markers when I'm off air, um, unless I really have to. So I didn't use it this time, but I'll pop it in there for now. And off we go. I'm going to pop this on fast until we get down to the base of the row, and off we go. And 10. I'm just checking that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just checking now because we're nearing the end. All right, so that's where your stitch finishes. You've got one left here and then your working work is in that last one. Now that's if you've ended up with just one stitch left. If you don't have one stitch left and you are right up to there, cut your work and I'll show you how to sew your sides together in a minute but for the rest of us if you have one row left if you have two more rows then do your two rows yeah slip stitch twice over and go up yeah all right so the idea is we're not slip stitching in there because that is the where your work is you're going directly into the very next stitch which is there yeah and then right into the stitch with your work yeah the very first stitch you did pull a loop through like so turn your work and you are going to do the very last row if this is what you have on your end all right i'll talk about um, everyone else's end once they're done and do your 10 i'm not going to pop this on fast because we're nearly done here now yay get excited all right and three more two one, I'm sorry, one more, <laughs> two more, three more, what did I say? Doesn't matter, we're here. This is the last thing you're going to crochet for your sweater. Get excited. No, it's not, one more. Pull up the loop and give your work a cut. Where you should be right now is there, all right? And you should be able to grab your thread and sew down there, all the way down your two pieces together like that all right now if you have gotten up here and you still have one space bring your row straight down here slip stitch uh, no slip stitch into that bottom stitch right there cut your thread and you will be sewing yours up this way all right i'm sewing mine down let's just make sure that this all marries up because if it's too big or too tight or whatever, it's not going to work. But this does marry up. All right. So, oops, I'm not even in frame. See there, it marries up. When you lay your work flat like that, I'm trying to get that front to come out. <laughs> you lay your work flat, your piece marries up. If it's like that, you need to do another row down there, slip stitch down in the bottom and do it. But really... The way you should see it is like that. It should literally line up with each other. I think that's as close as I'm going to get it. I've even jumped into that last stitch. All right, so have you done that? Cut your work. Get excited, guys. Get excited. Get excited. Give your work a cut. Ta-da. All right, that's it. You're done. No, no, you're not done. <laughs> Now you have to sew these side seams together, which is very, very basic. And I cut like a really, really long, a really, really long tail. Don't cut yours as long as mine. It's like, you know, two rows of sewing. <laughs> 
sewing down side seams if you have to think about it. <laughs> thread your needle and give yourself a pat on the back, guys, because you're done. Sort of. Thread your needle. Yeah. Sort of. Listen to me. Sort of. Now, your thread is up there. Yep. I still have my my one thread attached down here, which I crocheted over a little bit, like maybe you did too. Um, but I'm going to weave that back in later. But for now, what we want to do, this is the front of your work. It's the back of your work, right? But this is the, the outside of your work. You don't want to sew on the outside. You want to sew on the inside. So bringing your work together. If it helps you to turn your sweater inside out to do this part, you can. Yours truly is not going to. I'll probably make it difficult for myself, but anyway. Um, so here's my thread, which is still attached. Yeah, we are going to go back into. Let's get a closer. Can you see or not? Oh, it's hard with the red. It's hard with the red. Go back into the red stitch that you are in. Yeah, that your thread is on. If you can, I've got the wrong needle now. I've got the sewing needle, which is making it difficult to weave. There we go. And pull it through like so. <laughs> it really is a long tail. And go to the other side. Yeah. N remember to do your sewing on the inside of your work, not the outside, the inside. Yeah. So grab your other side with your stitch marker if you left it in there. I didn't. Yep. Hopefully you left yours in. Oh no, you wouldn't have a stitch marker there. All right. So you've got one side and one side. Now you're going to go directly into the other side with the stitching it's really hard to see sorry guys but I'm going through the whole stitch both the loops on both sides whoops not anymore <laughs> my needle fell out hello um, both the loops on both sides whoops and just be careful not to split your work now I'm going to split mine because because I'm using the wrong needle you should be using the sewing the darning needle, the flat ned needle for this, but that's okay. Just be careful when you're doing yours. All right. I have a feeling that sitting here watching me is going to bore you, and I'm not even in frame. Hello. I might pop this on fast. So if you're anything like me, you're struggling towards the end. But be wary, there is going to be a hole there if you don't finish it off. See that? There will be a hole. So it might pay for you, if you want, to stick your finger in and just see. You can find the stitch there. The, the stitches opposite each other. I hope that helps. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if it was on air or off air. There's still a little hole. So I'm going into the stitch there and into the stitch on the other side. And we're going to open it up and have a look at it and make sure it looks okay. So that is the back of your neck edge. It's not too bad anyway. There is another way you could have lifted one loop up and not the other. But it comes across a little loose when you do that. And I like this look. It tightens up the neck edge really well. All right. But for those of you who have ended up down there, you needed to sew your piece all the way up the top. And just once you get to the top, you can go over a few more times and then just weave your piece through this way. But for the rest of us, guess what we've done? We're done. We are going to, yay, get excited. We are going to just weave in our end. You can weave it in across there if you like or here. And just weave it through anywhere you want. I've got such a really long tail. I don't know what possessed me to leave such a long tail. Hmm, there you go. <laughs> Did that do any damage here? No, good. <laughs> she says. <laughs> it's a really, really long tail. All right, back the other way. We're going into different stitches again. Anywhere you want. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do because it's the final stitch. I might actually weave across here a little bit as well. Not necessary, okay? You can cut it when you're ready. But I'm a very, very pedantic crochet. 
<laughs> my regulars know that already making sure you can't see the needle from the front very good <laughs> that is a really long tail I think I'll cut it there now <laughs> you can go back again if you like but I'm gonna cut it there it's way too long <laughs> <laughs> there you go don't forget you need to weave in that middle end as well and I tell you what we're going to do check this out right here simply divine and as you can see whilst wearing it how it looks I love 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 and there you go all right so thank you very much for joining us for our crochet along creating this gorgeous uh, patchwork sweater with us guys it has been a long road to completing it in between myself getting ill and the family getting ill we finally got it done um, but here we are at the end of our crochet along so thank you very much for joining us today guys don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys well pretty much already do for me <laughs> and my name is mary this is well crochet designs and i'll catch you in our very next tutorial ah, ciao for now